So today I'm actually going to start my first video series uh, disassembling this old motor that I have. So this motor is the original motor from my E36 right here. The motor that you see in the car I took from a junkyard. It was the same exact motor but it was from an automatic. But now, time to actually work on this bad boy. So I put a thicker head gasket, ARP head studs for this turbo build, and you know all that pizzazz and stuff like that. But already know about that but now to move on this one um, you can see that I've already taken a bunch of things off uh, basically stuff like the oil housing was pretty easy to take off couple bolts there once you take these sensors off be sure you mark which wires go to which points on the engine just to make it easier for reconnections and stuff like that so I've already started off by taking all the 10 millimeter bolts off of the top uh, crankcase right here and this crankcase will actually come off fairly easily Good pull now the reason why I decided to rebuild this motor is one, uh, the cams are in decent condition, but um, there is some scoring on some of these. Basically I want to film this disassembly procedure just for you guys, just to show that it is not difficult to take apart these motors. Um, I built this entire motor right here using just garage tools and a little bit of specialty tools here and there. These engines are fairly easy to reassemble, you just gotta have a little bit of know-how, do a little bit of research, have the right tools. Um, but other than that, it shouldn't be too difficult, so let's get started. As usual, don't forget safety glasses. So I got the motor cleaned up just a little bit. I did what I could. I basically just used some engine degreaser and just went with a plastic brush and just scrubbed around, took a couple of paper towels, wiped it up. So this will now give me a better, cleaner working surface to work on so you guys can clearly see which bolts I take off. So I'm gonna take the valve cover off and I've already put some penetrating fluid on all these bolts around surrounding the Venus. So I'm going to take these two bolts off now and then work my way to take the Venus unit out completely. So what I'm doing right now is actually putting the engine to top dead center. So once you've turned the main front assembly to uh, top dead center, you'll know because there's an O and a T right here, and it matches up to this tick mark. So once the motor's at top dead center, you'll notice that there's these two dots on each cam facing up, which is a good sign, so that now you can slip the timing locks over later. So you need to use the flywheel lock pin, especially if the motor's in the car. Uh, basically, this kind of helps align everything at top dead center, and the placement is right here. So if the motor was in the car, this is the position of where you would insert this pin. So it's right here right along the side of the motor, right about below the starter. Be very careful about any electrical connections in that area. So unplug the battery just to be safe. So you simply pull out the plastic tab right here and you insert this tool right there. Give your crankshaft a little wiggle with the breaker bar in the front and it should lock in place. So if you're working with the motor in the car, I highly recommend putting in the timing locks. This just makes your life easier after you put in that uh, locking pin on the flywheel. There are plenty of videos of people installing these uh, lock pins, but I just wanted to show you that it is possible to take apart the entire top end without really using these timing blocks. These timing blocks are just a surefire way to make sure that you're not moving this camshaft and possibly hitting a valve into a piston. So after I crack the bolts loose on the Vanos itself, I'm actually going to use this small Allen key. When you get a brand new tensioner, typically there's a pin inside that holds this entire assembly downwards so that once you pull the pin out, it puts pressure on the top tightening chain. So I'm just going to take an Allen key right here, push down at the top, and then place the uh, Allen key into this hole to hold it down. So as you can see there, the Allen key is actually now holding this tensioner down, and now i got some slack on this line to move around the Venos. And then typically, I forgot to mention, this has like a little bracket on top where your veno solenoid ground would go, and you're just going to remove this 13 mil right here as well. Also, make sure you detach all the respective oil lines because oil will drip from these locations as you pull it off. Just a couple love taps. So now I'm going to loosen the Torx bits around the primary sprocket on the uh, exhaust side. So now that these bolts are loosened, you can now actually move this around just a little bit. So now you're going to take this Venus tool around the top here, and then forcing it clockwise will actually push this Venus unit off.
Now that the venous unit is off, I'm going to actually continue removing these sprockets now. Depending on your motor, you might have a different set of plates around here, but in my case, I just have the single plate in between, so just keep track of where these plates are and how they're placed inside. So now that I got the bolts removed all these off these faces, I can actually just remove these slowly. After I cleaned the face off, I actually marked on the chains and the sprockets itself where the chain meets just to remember where it is. And additionally, I just zip tied the center so that this is now a rigid piece and I can actually pick it up like this. And so now I can safely store this without having to really worry about the placement of this or retiming it by myself. So there's a special trick to get 16 millimeters of clearance extra from the pistons from the valves itself. So basically once the pistons are dropped down, you can work on cams, you can remove cams, rotate cams a lot more safely without having to worry about any contact between valves and pistons. So I got my 22 here and it's about right here, about, uh, about one o'clock, two o'clock. It doesn't have to be too, too accurate, but basically I'm going to rotate the motor. About there. And that should drop the pistons down about 16 millimeters. So next up is actually removing these bolts again. Again, they're the same size as the previous. So after you remove the entire front timing assembly of the two camshafts, the next step is to actually remove this timing tensioner right here. And it's a couple bolts right here. I think I believe they're, so you have to remove the bolts here, here, here and there in order to remove this entire assembly out. It should come right out. The bolt shouldn't be tight at all. I usually just put the bolts back um, where they belong just to avoid forgetting uh, where they go when I install a new tensioner. So as you can see, this is the secondary chain tensioner. And basically, depending on your model, you might have a little uh, flange right here that actually sits right where the chain would run through. This would be an updated tensioner. And uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use, but the updated tensioner kind of guides the chain better. It has like prongs that stick out. Gonna take a zip tie so that now I can just hold it still like this or then let it fall through. But either way, this is just temporary because I'm gonna be taking the entire head off. So I'm basically just gonna hold this just to have something to just put my fingers around when I actually pull this off. So you can let the chain fall down very, very slowly at an angle so that the teeth don't actually skip off the gear sprocket for the oil pump itself. Um, that way when you pull the head off, this whole piece can just come out and then you don't have to worry about holding it or juggling between pulling the head off and holding the chain itself. So if you want to take apart the camshaft, you have two options. You either can take it apart on the car or take it apart when the cylinder head is completely off. Um, either way, um, it's not too bad of a procedure, but just in mind, like I said before, you're going to have to rotate the crank a little bit in order to get better clearance between the valves because you will have to rotate the camshafts into different orientations. So I might either be either getting a new cylinder head or working with this one here, but either way, the cylinder head's coming off, so it will actually be easier for me to take the cams off when the cylinder head is separate from the motor. Regardless of which method you choose, whether to leave the head on the block or take it apart, I'm going to show you how to take the head off anyways because I will be removing the cams later on. So the removal in general is pretty straightforward. Just don't forget about these two small bolts on the front. Most people tend to forget about these. I forgot it the first time I was taking these motors apart. So the head bolts are actually fairly simple to remove as well. They're right next to the camshafts. So when you break these loose, I usually go from the inside and out. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. It matters more when you reassemble it. There's a specific torque procedure and a specific torque pattern that you need to follow when actually reinstalling the head. So 
So if you ever have trouble taking a bowl out, just take like a couple pieces of paper towel. I credit Mighty Car Mods for this. Just place it right in there, insert the socket, and you should be able to pull the bolts right out. So as I mentioned before, there's a special actually head removal tool, and this has a, I like this because it's the perfect length, it's one piece, and it has the right bit at the end, and again, you can't really exactly use this to install like aftermarket head studs or anything like that because it uses a different tool itself. I can't stress enough how awesome it is to buy a set of earth magnets. These things are really strong so you can attach them to the end of like a long extension to pick up bolts and stuff. But actually what I did was I just stacked them into a long line and that's how I'm going to get my head bolts out. So you have the head bolt over there. I'm simply going to get the magnet, stick it on, pull it out, and don't forget the washer in there as well. So now that I got the head bolts loose, I need a second pair of hands just to lift this straight off. I would use the engine crane, but I feel like it's too unstable, plus I don't have that much room in the garage. Anyways, let's see who I can call. S4s are for noobs! What'd you say? Alright, ignition tube's here to help out. Uh, he's my second pair of hands, so let's get the cylinder head off. Set it on the block and wiggle the table a little bit. Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle this corner. Just to see the furnaces. Ready? Yeah. There we go. Alright, see in a little bit. <laughs> 165,000 miles on an M50. Looks new. Send it. Mm -hmm. Put it back together. Put some boost on it. Put some boost? It should be gooch. <laughs> So we got the head propped up, and interestingly enough, interesting. Oh. <laughs> Turn your phone off while you're Sorry. filming. Come on, man. Interestingly, interestingly enough, though, this head is in much better condition than the other engine that's currently in the car. Surprising because this motor has 160,000 miles on it versus my motor, which has 118,000 miles on it. So this was the stock motor that came out of the car, and I'm very happy that it's actually in really good condition. Um, there's not a lot of electrolysis around the coolant passage, passages because coolant over time can eat away at the aluminum. Now that we got the head off, uh, I'm actually going to show you guys how to take the cams off. So I set the cylinder head on top of blocks of wood just to make sure the valve's in contact with the actual table. Because basically the general overview is you're going to rotate the cam such that two uh, lobes on cylinder one are facing straight down. And you'll know that it is also correct because the opposite end would be facing straight up. That way, all the pressure is going to be on one valve, so you can take apart all the other caps and then back out slowly these caps and then the whole camshaft will come off really quickly. And it's the same procedure on both. Okay, rotating it so that the number one cam lobe is fully face down. So this lobe is facing straight up, and so number one is facing straight down. And basically in this position, as you can see along here, every single other lobe is not making contact with the lifters at all. So your job is to make sure that doesn't move. Okay, how so much does it not need to so move? You, it, it, see, it's easy to rotate, uh -huh. but you just literally have to hold it with as much, just hold it still, okay. be strong. And if you, if you haven't already, go check out drivennakira.org. Support Andrew. I got the same brace. Oh, where'd my bracelet go? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Okay. 11 millimeter socket. Crack, 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 open. crack open a cold <laughs> cylinder head with the boys. FTB. Another thing to notice is that each one of these uh, valve guides are um, numbered. So E for intake and then A for exhaust. And then so just keep track of which one goes which one 
sorry, to keep track of which one goes to which valve. This one clearly goes to the first one and it goes down in order. I'm glad you told me that because I just took all of these off and had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So this last one right here is going to be a quarter turn at a time. So now you can rotate it. You can rotate. No, it's okay. You can rotate it slightly. There we go. And it just relieves the tension off completely. Oh. And we are good to go. So now that the intake cam is off, I'm going to repeat and do the same exact procedure on the exhaust side. So I'm going to show you guys a quick trick in order to take out this cam tray um, without having the lifters fall out. Uh, I take this from an old E36 video, by the way. I'll put all the sources that I've referred to uh, taking this head apart in the description below. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to put magnets on each, those earth magnets that I was mentioning before, you're going to put each one of those onto here. You might need two or three of them. Thanks, Eli. You might need two or three of them, and then what you're going to take is, give me that. <laughs> I have like an old piece, I have an old brake line here, but you can also use a coat hanger. But basically you're going to line up all the magnets here, and it will hold the lifters in place, and you can pull the entire tray out without having the lifters fall in. And this is beneficial if you're planning on reusing your old lifters. Boom, boom. Oh. So I'm working with a magnet right there. And then it sticks right onto the bar. So now you can take this whole tray out. What is this witchcraft? Boom. Oh, it's just a bullet that fell through. See? What is this witchcraft? And all these lifters Watch are all going to fall out now. I know, right? Watch this. Oh. <laughs> They're pretty good noise. Right? So as you can see here, I've completely taken out the cams and the actual lifter trays. And honestly, it's pretty quick. If I were to do this without filming, this entire process would probably take me about an hour or two. Um, then again, having an extra set of hands is also very helpful. I highly recommend making sure that you've got the proper set of tools. Make sure you have that Vano set up. Um, make sure you have all the necessary head bolt tools, necessary hardware, a bunch of long socket torx bits. So the next thing up is of course to take apart this block. And as you can see here, it is very, very dirty. There's a lot of carbon deposit on there. But um, in my opinion, this, the state, the state of this motor is much better than the one that's actually currently in the car. And I'm surprised because it has less mileage on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY. Thanks again for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.